a leaky person cannot be used of God. Hmm? For every time God pours in something in oh, you gotta come with me today. Watch this. A leaky person is always encouraging themselves in God. Mm. Ever encouraging. Don't you know encouraging yourself in God is a tool? But a tool not to be used every single day. I wish somebody would walk with me in this room. Every day you're encouraging yourself in God. What happens in the deliverance? It. Well, I don't mean to condemn you. I'm just talking about leaky people in the house of God. And so we stop judging people when they walk through the door. Check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we say we're holy. We say we walk right. We say we're upright. But we're always at the prayer line. God can use us for every time he pours in. I see you today. He said, God, I'm ready to do your work. Tomorrow you're hanging your hearts. Lord, I'm encouraging. What are you doing? I'm encouraging myself in God. Why are you encouraging yourself again? Didn't God give you deliverance? Oh. But the good or anointed leaked out. There's something to be said about a vessel that is reliable. Have you ever had a cup? A special cup? Good old life. Well, I've had cups in my time where I wouldn't drink from anything else. I had my cup. I drank cold water in it. I drank hot tea in it. It was my special cup. It was all reliable. It would never leak on me. It would never drain out. It would never empty out. And whatever I did in and out, hey, it was ready to be used. And every time I called on it, it was ready to be used. Whether it be hot or cold or whatever, my cup was ready to be used. I'm wondering if you are ready to be used of God. I'm wondering if you are that vessel that God can use. I'm wondering if you're ready for God to use you. I'm wondering if you're ready to say, Lord, Lord, mend me and use me. Cry out, Lord, mend me and use me. Cry out, Lord, Lord, mend me and use me. Oh, tell somebody, Lord, Lord, Lord. Tell somebody, I'm asking God to mend me and use me. Ah, oh, Lord, use me. There's a work that I can do. I've been leaky for too long. It's time for me to change. Put me back on the wheel again and make me again another vessel. A vessel of honor. said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Yes. In other words, we're saying, I'm a vessel ready to be used of God. Yes. Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, you've done great things in my life. Lord, you've made me, you've put me, you've turned me, you've fashioned me, you've shaped me. Ah, oh, you've made me that vessel that can obtain. You've given me capacity and you're attracted to capacity. You're poured into my life in so much that it's flowed over that I can pour into somebody else's life. Lord, what do you have me to do? God is attracted to reliable vessels. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hmm? God is attracted to reliable vessels. Our text said today that Naaman the leper, a mighty man in his country, a mighty man amongst his people, a conqueror, a warrior, a fighter. The Bible said he was renowned, he was had high accolades, he was regarded as great among his people. But he was a leper. And if you know anything about leprosy in Israel, uh, Israel regarded the lepers as the scourge. They were considered the scourge, the outcast, and one that was thrown out, kind of like what we do to people when they're not, hey, have a name of Jesus. We throw them out on their heads. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Hey, yeah. Say amen. 
Amen. And so uh, they were they were called the scourge, the leper. They, they had requirements. They had to wear this monument. They had to wear this gown. And they had to rent the front of the garment. And they had to have their hair all messed up and their beard covered. And they when they walk down the street, they have to say, I'm clean. I'm clean. Just in case somebody may come in contact with him and be defiled. And so a leper was regarded as into the Israelite as a reject, a castaway, a thrown away. Naaman was not only a leper, but he was also a Gentile. So God had no dealings. Uh, Israel had no dealings with Gentiles. How much more would they have dealings with a leper? But the Bible said this Naaman, as God dropped in my spirit, amen, a mighty man, but he was a leper. And uh, the Bible said they went conquering and they conquered this. Uh, part of Israel and they took a little maiden. They pulled her out of Israel and when they pulled her out of Israel, they had her as a little servant amen to God and she served the mistress or the wife of Naaman. Many of us would have been discouraged if we were taken away in our Sunday school lesson. If something brutal were to happen to us hey, would we still have confidence in God? If, they, if we were taken away as a slave, would we still have confidence in God? If we lose a car, would you still have confidence in God. If you lose your house, will you still have confidence in God? If you lose your children, will you still have confidence in God? Hey, if you were abandoned, you were thrown away, it seemed like you had no hope. Would you still have confidence in God? The Bible tells us that this young maiden, amen to God, she beheld Naaman. And when she saw Naaman, the book said, my, I wish, she said to her mistress, I wish to God, that this man was in Israel, he would have gone down to Samaria to see the prophet, for surely the prophet would heal, amen, amen. But when I looked at the text, I realized something was so profound in it. This young lady made herself a vessel that was able to be used of God. Ah, she went to hell. She went to a hard time. She was captured against her will. She was in a state of the fuck she was taken away made a slave yet she believed in the God of Israel yes, yes, yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. yet she didn't turn her back on God what would you do if you were in that state this young girl, she was young. She was a young girl. Oh my God, she believed in the gods of her father. Yes, she believed though she was taken away. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. It doesn't matter what come upon me, I will trust God. When you are a vessel of honor, it doesn't matter what they pour in, it doesn't matter, amen, what they put you, where they throw you down, you are still a vessel of honor. Thank you, man. Thank you. And a vessel of honor is a pliable vessel. Yes. Oh Lord God. Yes. A vessel of honor will be reliable. Yes. This young lady, the Bible didn't say much about her, but it spoke profoundly by her attitude towards God. Oh my God, young. And I was saying if I were that young and I were taken away, I would be bitter. Oh God, we can't even handle it. The pastor said our head's big. We can't even handle that. How am I going to handle it? God was to take me away in captivity. But she made herself a pliable vessel that God can use. She made herself an instrument that God can use to bless somebody else. The problem is we only care about being blessed ourselves. We only care if the blessing falls on us. All we care about is our own blessing. But this young lady said to God, I wish, and say, I wish to God that I could be delivered. Yes. She, she did not say, I wish to God that I could be free from slavery. She didn't say, I wish to God that I could be free from sickness. She didn't say, I free to wish to God that I could get rich and run away. She did not have that wish. Her wish was somebody else to be blessed. Yes. Oh, we're talking about a selfless nature. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave. It's a selfless attitude that will cause you to be saved. Yes, right. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. The reason why we can't get the power of God is because all we care about is to have the power for ourselves. Exactly. True, true. True, true. Let get a word today. We only care about ourselves. But this young lady made herself a vessel in the hands of God. Oh, yes. Amen. 
That's right. For every vessel is in the potter's hand. That's right. Amen. I'll tell somebody I'm in his hand. Come on, wake up and tell somebody I'm in his hand. You might say what you want about me, but I'm in his hand. You might say my head's big, but I'm in his hand. You might think I'm not anointed, but I'm in his hand. You might think I'm rejected, but I am in his hand. And I have made myself available that the potter can patch me and use me. How about you? How about you? How about you? How about you? Oh, God, how about you? How about you? The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that when Naaman heard, his men heard the story, oh, he ran into the king and said, thus and thus, king, look, you got to send him down to this prophet. You got to send the mighty man of valor down to the prophet because peradventure this great man could be healed. There's something to be said. Amen to God. Hey, when you think you're great and mighty, but still run to the house of God for healing. You think you're so awesome and so well lifted up and so well rounded, but when you're in trouble, you run to the house of God. There's something to be said about the potter's house. When you think you're so great in a vessel, you look at the end, you end right back on the potter's wheel. There's something about the house of God. You can discard it for a long time, but when trouble comes your way, you find your way back to the house of God. Blessing is in the house of God. Your freedom is in the house of God. Your restoration is in the house of God. You can do what you want, but you're going to have to end up in the house of God. Watch this. And if you don't come alive, you're going to draw you in dead. Oh, you're going to come right back to the house of God. Something about the house. Oh, we look at this text we read through, but there's so much to talk to you about. This text, Lord of mercy. And so go now, he said. Now the king said, Listen, the king of Syria. He said, Now go down to the potter's house. Ben Hadad of his Syria. He said, Get some now. Get talents of silver and gold. And go down and pay tribute to the house of God. Go to the king and tell the king of Israel. Joram, the king of Israel, that I want this man to be healed. Glory be to God. Now Joram got the letter. I want to show you that there's some leaky vessels. There's some leaky pastors. Some leaky leaders in the house of God. Joram got the letter. And opposed as opposed to going to God. As Hezekiah did. Joram started to work. Joram started to fret. Am I God to make alive? Am I God to heal leprosy? This man wants to fight. Joram was not an anointed king. Solomon was an anointed king. David was an anointed king. For David inquired of the Lord. But we have some leaders that are not in the right position. They need to reposition themselves. Can't lead with the anointed. They lead by power. They're politicians. Not of God. I shake them up with it. In the wrong position. When trouble comes their way, they don't know how to cry to God. They start to worry. If you have a worried leader, you don't have a leader. You need somebody that will grab the bull by the horn and say, I'll go to the Lord of my salvation. I'm going down to the potter's house. Oh, glory be to God. Joram was an empty vessel. Lord of mercy. Whatever was poured into him leaked out. Yes. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. He walked like a king. He talked like a king. But he was an empty vessel. And as I first said, empty vessels make the most noise. Mm, don't start watching each other in praise and worship. <laughs> Empty vessels make the most noise. I'm sure Joram was a big mouth king. I will do this and I will do that. But if you don't have the proper content, you are empty. If trouble comes your way and you don't know what to do, you are empty. <sighs> Joram was simply a politician. Mm. Mm. in the wrong position the Bible 
said when he got the word, he started to worry. The Bible said he rented his garment. That renting means that he's in mourning. 